Hey guys, it's Laura and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about something that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time now. I just wanted to apologise in advance for my voice and if I may sound a bit quiet. I think I'm coming down with tonsillitis and I know that I should rest my voice and get better but I really wanted to make this video and I didn't want you guys to come out a video this week. As you can tell by the title, I've called it anxiety, depression and bullying. I've been wanting to talk about anxiety and depression for a long time now and someone actually suggested to talk about bullying as well because they found that watching these kind of videos on YouTube about bullying and how other people dealt with it really helped them deal with them, like deal with their bullying. So I'm going to jump straight into it. I don't want it to be too long, so I'm not going to go into major detail about everything. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I first found out that I had anxiety and depression in 2013. And at the time, I didn't know what anxiety and depression meant, what it was, or how to deal with it. Before I was officially diagnosed with depression and anxiety, I was crying all the time, I was stressing out for no reason, and I would just get very panicky in a very public situation, and I've never felt like that before, and when I was told that I had depression and anxiety, it all fell into place, and then I knew that it was just more than me being upset. It was an actual mental illness that I had. At first, when I first found out that I had these mental illnesses, I was very wary about who I told because I know that a lot of people think that if you tell them that you've got depression that you're just attention seeking or if that you've got anxiety, you're attention seeking and I was diagnosed around the time when everyone was going through hard times and a lot of people were committing suicide and they were all getting called attention seekers and everything and I personally didn't want to be put into that category when I first found out. So for a long time I had to deal with in in silence because as I said I didn't know how to deal with depression and I didn't know how to deal with my anxiety either. My depression and anxiety would get really bad sometimes to the point where I did think about committing suicide and I mean at the time I was diagnosed with this illness I was already getting treated for another illness. Um, I was getting treated for cancer and if you guys want to know more about that I'll leave a link for the video I did on that down below. So I was dealing with not one but two illnesses and I'd already got my head around one of the illnesses and learned how to deal with that in a way that I felt comfortable. But then I had this new illness or new illnesses that I didn't know how to handle and I didn't know how to get my head around so I felt like I couldn't talk to anyone about it because I didn't know how to deal with it myself, let alone didn't know what the hell was wrong with me. So I started seeing a counsellor and I mean he was he was okay but just some of the vibes that he gave off to me most of the time just wasn't helping at all. Like sometimes it made me feel ten times worse after seeing him. I eventually changed and I saw another counsellor, a female this time, and I have absolutely fallen in love with her. She is probably the best counsellor I've ever had in my life and she has helped me so much. I honestly have a lot to thank her for. I've never really had to deal with anxiety attack or a panic attack before because I've never gotten that stress out or to that point where I've had a panic attack. But just recently I go into public and I start hyperventilating, start sweating and I just I've never dealt with that before and I told my counsellor about this and she gave me some really good advice on how to deal with it in public and I, as I said, I owe her a great deal just for helping me out and just listening to me talk shit for an hour 
every couple of weeks. So my counselor gave me some really good advice on how to deal with your depression. But first, the one thing that she did tell me was you can't help other people who have depression if you are depressed yourself. It's just like trying to treat someone that has a medical condition but you're not qualified to do it, like you're not a doctor. And that's the same with helping a friend or a family member or just some stranger who has depression if you've got depression yourself because it just won't work. So that's one thing that she told me. Okay, another thing that she told me that helped me was she said to me, it's okay to cry. Don't feel like you're less of a person or that you're weak if you cry. It's okay to cry, it's okay to show emotion, it's okay to show anger. If you feel so upset, don't hold it in, don't bottle it up, don't ignore it. You need to acknowledge that, acknowledge that you're feeling that way and then you need to cry or scream into a pillow or something like do anything but just don't put all of that because that makes it ten times worse and it just can aggravate a situation and just make you feel really, really crappy. I'm really getting over my voice right now. Another thing that you can do if you're dealing with depression, anxiety or stress or you're just having a really crappy day and you don't want to vent on Facebook, write a diary like legit. I have been writing diaries since I was about 12, so I've been writing diaries for about 7 years and they have been my life so far, like, some days I will just write crap in these that doesn't even have any relevance to my day whatsoever. And then some days I can write a deep and meaningful passage in my diary and I was just like, I feel like a creative genius when that happens. If you're feeling like crap and you don't want to eat, and all your dirty laundry on Facebook, and get a diary. That's another point with Facebook. No one needs to know why you're feeling depressed, why you're feeling sad. I know, I admit I do it. I've done it, I do it, but I don't do it as much as I used to do it. And I used to do it all day, every day. And it wasn't until about six months ago I realised no one wants to hear my crap. People don't need to know why I'm feeling upset or feeling angry. I've got about 500 odd Facebook friends and not all 500 of them need to know why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. I mean, if they want to know, they have the common courtesy to come up to me and ask me in person, are you okay? Don't put it on Facebook because then people can take everything out of context. They can take it out of proportion and they can just make you feel a hundred times worse over the internet because they can say all this stuff to you and they're on the other side of the computer screen and that's the thing. Would you rather have a diary know everything that's wrong in your life or a social media network where there are millions and millions of people reblogging and posting and retweeting stuff every single day. Someone could take a screenshot of your status and retween it and then it could get retweeted like a hundred million times like doubt there's a hundred million people on Facebook but on Twitter maybe there is I don't know. I found that I'd prefer to air all my dirty laundry in a diary that no one else but me reads then post it on a social media website where people can just pick it apart and make a bigger situation out of it and you know doing the whole nobody cares and who gives a shit um and just all that common stuff that everyone gets when they post something sad on facebook and that's the one thing i hate is the who cares like obviously if you were in that position and someone said who cares to you, it would make you feel like shit. And trust me, it's happened to me and it sucks. Now onto my last point about anxiety and depression and dealing with it. Because I don't want this video to go on for ages and I've still got to talk about one more topic. 
And the last thing that I just wanted to say was if you know anyone that is dealing with depression, anxiety, or is thinking about committing suicide, you need to tell someone, whether it's your mum or their mum, a teacher, a unknown, anyone, anyone that's willing to listen, if you've got a friend that's thinking about committing suicide or is depressed and don't know how to deal with it, you need to tell someone older than you that can help. The very last thing that I want to say was, it's okay to cry and it gets better. I know they are the most true cliche things to say in a situation like that, but everything does get better. It may not get better tomorrow or the next day or the next day after that. It might take weeks or months or maybe even years, but it will get better and you won't feel like this for a very long time because I still have my days where I'm feeling sad and just moping and don't want to deal with this world. But I have my days where I'm really actually truly happy. I thank my lucky stars that I actually went and talked to someone about my issues instead of going and doing something stupid and not being able to start this YouTube channel and made new friends and I don't know like I just there's just a lot more to life than being sad and I know that sad is a, is a normal emotion to feel but at the end of the day it does get better. And for anyone who doesn't know how to deal with someone that has depression or doesn't have depression themselves, the one thing you don't do is tell a person with depression that nobody cares. You don't ignore them, you don't just brush it off, you just... If you are seeing someone that is crying or is having a hard time and they're just not being themselves, go and ask them if they are okay. That's all most people with depression want is someone to ask them if they are okay and to lend them a shoulder to cry on. You don't go up to someone and be like, ill, no one cares about your issues because someone does. Someone does care. I care. I will have anyone that is dealing with something come and talk to me about it and I may not be able to help them but I can steer them in the right path on getting help because, as I said, I've got depression myself and it's hard for me to help someone with depression deal with their depression when I'm not cured from depression myself. I just said depression too many times in that one sentence. And two, I am not, me I am not qualified. I don't have a degree in psychology or anything into helping anyone with depression, anxiety or stress on how to deal with it. And this is just how I found to deal with it. So I found writing a diary, keeping it off social media, talking to my parents, talking to friends, and talking to my counsellor, the best ways that I found on dealing with depression and anxiety and accepting the fact that I had a mental illness and I may have it for the rest of my life or I may not have it for the rest of my life. So as I said, if you're dealing with depression or anxiety yourself, I will leave the Australian hotline phone numbers in the description box below so if you're feeling like that just give them a call everything stays confidential unless they think that you're at risk but everything stays confidential you can ring up and be anonymous they don't need to know who you are they can help you and I always like to tell myself that tomorrow is going to be better than today today is only 24 hours and tomorrow Yes, it's only going to be 24 hours, but it's going to be better than the past 24 hours you just lived. If that makes any sense at all, I don't think it does, but... And the one thing that I love to live by is my quote that I live by, and I, I always say it to myself as a little mantra whenever I'm feeling like crap, and it is, a life worth living is a life worth living right. I say that to myself whenever I'm feeling crappy and just ewy it's my quote so the last thing that i want to talk about really really quickly because someone suggested it to me through inbox on facebook was bullying now i have been on both ends of the bullying stick i have been bullied and i have been a bully now that i'm 19 years old i've now come to realize that bullying sucks it's 
the most horrible thing to do and it's the most horrible thing to experience. I wonder why people bully other people. Like, I sit back now and I'll be like, why did I bully that person? Just because they were a little bit different than me. It, that doesn't give me the right to bully someone and it doesn't give you the right to bully someone either. As I said, I've been on both ends of this thing and when I bully people, I think I was in such a bad place myself and I was like hating on the world when I was bullying people. Bullying other people just relieved my hatred on hating the world and I don't know why I did it because it was so pathetic and it was so pity. And I actually think that's why people bully is because they are so sad and so unhappy with their own lives and the own life they live that they have to bring other people down to their level so they know how they're feeling and I think that is the worst thing that anyone can do is drag someone down to the way that you're feeling. I know I'm sounding like a bit of a hypocrite now but I now realise that because I'm now older and I'm an adult next I'm I'm gonna be an official adult next year. I'm leaving my teenhood next year and I just think that the way that I acted as a young teenager was absolutely disgusting. I am appalled. If I could go back in time, I would tell myself, like my younger self, not to bully people and maybe I could have been, I could have become a more better person back then than just realising it just a few, like about a year ago that I was so much more than the person I was. And in hindsight, I just wanted to say that if you see anyone being bullied, whether it's because they've got funny hair or just because they look a little bit different. I know some people like to jump in and help, but the best thing that you can do is go find an adult to help. If you jump into the situation, it is more likely that you're going to make the situation worse or you're going to start getting bullied yourself and that's just going to aggravate, aggravate the situation a hell of a lot more than it needs to be. I'm saying that, if you see someone is being bullied over Facebook or Twitter, Instagram, you need to report the status that is has started this argument, which has started the bullying, so that they can remove it before it gets any worse. I think the worst form of bullying happens over social media because there is no boundaries on how far you can go because you're on a computer or you're on a phone behind a keyboard. There's no limit to say when enough is enough because you have infinite characters on a keyboard and it takes a lot longer for someone to do something on social media than it does in real life. And what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that don't, don't be a bully. Don't get yourself wrapped up with people that do bully because you're not going to get very far in life. And I hate, I really hate to get all morbid and everything, but if you bully someone and continue to bully someone, you could be the reason that they commit suicide. And I'd hate for anyone that is wanting to bully someone or is bullying someone currently at this time that if you bully someone to the point where they commit suicide you will have blood on your hands for the rest of your life you've got to ask yourself is that something that you're really willing to live with for the rest of your life like you could be sitting down with your kids later on in life and you could think back and think crap should i have really bullied friend until the point that he was feeling that shit about himself that he committed suicide. Should I really have done that? Was it the right thing to do? And you will regret it for the rest of your life that you bullied someone to the point when they committed suicide. If someone is picking on you or they're just being rude about you, you need to be the bigger person. Turn your back and walk away. Yes, I know it makes you look like a coward and that you can't stick up for yourself, but you are sticking up for yourself by being the better person and walking away from it. Don't retaliate. Don't throw back comments. Don't provoke them by report, like, by saying something back to them. Because the reality of it is if you provoke them and say something back, you're going to make it worse. So I always found that when I was being bullied, 
I would walk away. I would turn my back and I would walk away. Because I was being bullied after I had bullied people, it made me feel like crap because I knew exactly how these people that I believed felt. And so I don't want to go on about too much more about it, but at the end of the day, if you are dealing with bullying, walk away from it. Turn your back, walk away. Be the bigger person. Talk to a teacher, a parent, or any other adult that you trust. As I said, life gets better and everything will get better. And I just want everyone to know who is watching this video that I, I am here for you. You may not know who I am. I mean, I'm just another person on the other side of this screen that you're looking at. But if you ever need someone to talk to, don't be afraid to leave me a comment down here or send me a tweet or just something. And we can have a chat somewhere. Don't ever feel like that you're alone because there is always someone out there that does care. Whether you know them personally or they're just a random stranger. But saying that, be careful who you talk to online. I'm not some creep or anything. I'm just a 19 year old female that sits in her room and makes YouTube videos. But I'm saying that, that's everything for this video. As I said, I didn't want it to be really long. If you like this video, then please give it a massive thumbs up. Share this video with your friends. Share this video with anyone that you know that is having a hard time dealing with anxiety or depression or is it even getting bullied because this may help them. Uh, comment any feedback or any ideas in the comment section below. Or if you've had a hard time and you just want some friendly advice, leave me a comment in the comment section below and I will try and give you some friendly advice on how to deal with it. And most importantly, hit that subscribe button and become a part of my weekly hangout. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with me today. And again, I apologise if I sound really weird when this video goes up. Anyway, I will see you guys next week. Until then, have a great week and keep smiling.